It's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a stained glass butterfly card to share with some easy watercoloring techniques. To start my card, I stamped the butterfly from the Flutter By stamp set on some watercolor cardstock using Versamark ink, and then I'm going to heat emboss this image with some fine gold embossing powder. The gold embossing powder serves two purposes. It's really pretty. And kind of on trend right now to add some gold embossing to things or gold foiling um, and it also will help hold in the watercolors here I'm using the zig clean color real brush markers it's going to help hold in all of those colors in each little section giving it that really pretty stained glass look when I'm coloring with the zig clean color real brush markers I like to start with my darkest color and then take my lighter color and kind of pull out that darker color and blend the two together to get some nice shading. I am using all shades of kind of teals, blues, and purples for my card here today. And as each section of these butterflies wings is colored in, I think the stained glass look really kind of shows itself in that way. I'm using about four different color combinations. Each of them are shown in the upper left corner of the screen in case you want to know exactly which colors of these Zig markers I'm using. A couple of different combinations of blues and then that really pretty kind of teal color and then the purples. I'll keep coloring all of these in until the butterfly is all filled in. You could do any uh, color of embossing when you stamp the image you could stamp it in white uh, you could stamp it in or emboss it rather in white or emboss it with black whatever you like silver anything even a colored embossing powder I liked the gold here for this just so that it was a nice contrast to all of the color going on in the butterfly and the wings I'll fill in that last little area and then I'll be ready to start applying some watercolor to, around the butterfly to really add interest to the background. To do this, I'm going to use those same colors I used for the butterfly itself, and I'm just kind of tracing around the butterfly with these, changing the color every so often. And then I'll take a pretty wet paintbrush and pull that color down, not being very neat or particular with how I am pulling that color. I really want it to just kind of drip down there and give a really pretty watercolored look background. Go ahead and add a little bit more. I started out not exactly sure how much I wanted to add, so I started with just a little bit below. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more to the sides. I'm working in just little areas so that I can really see exactly where I want to add it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and do the same thing above the butterfly. Lay down some of that color right around the embossed edge of the design using the different colors of markers and then taking my wet paintbrush just pull the color down individually. In between each color change, even though they do blend as those waters, as the water kind of mixes the colors together, I do rinse out the brush pretty well so that I don't mix the colors too much when I initially wet those and kind of pull the color out. Now on the sides, I really felt like it needed a little bit more, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit more color on either side and blend blend the top and the bottom, I guess, together a little bit. It has a little bit of change of color, but I kind of like that. Go ahead and just pull that out. The paintbrush is pretty wet. And then once I kind of got that flipped around, I really felt like it needed a little bit more blending and then a little bit more color on either side of the butterfly to pull out that watercolored background just a little bit. 
but I didn't want to lay the color directly on the cardstock. So instead, I'm going to take my marker and take my wet paintbrush and touch that paintbrush to the marker tip itself to pull some of that color into my paintbrush and then apply it to the background of my card. Just another great way you can use these Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to add color. So if you don't want to add it directly to your paper, take a damp paintbrush to the tip of your marker and pick that color up and then apply it to your project. So I'm going to blend that out and then I will set this aside to air dry really, really well. So you're going to want to let that sit for quite a while. If you aren't patient and you don't have the time to do that, go ahead and uh, hit it with your heat tool to dry it quicker. I'm using dies from the Lawn Fawn Stitched Rectangles die collection and I'm just nesting them there in my machine and I'm going to die cut several colors of the Simon Says Stamp cardstock, colors that kind of coordinate with the same colors I used for the butterfly and the watercolor background. So I've got a kind of blue violet and then I've got a lilac color, a mint color, and then a teal blue color or an aqua color I guess I should say. And I'm going to die cut several frames. By nesting the frames when I die cut them, I am just going to be using that outer frame. It's going to create this really skinny frame that can frame up the stamped and watercolor, watercolored butterfly look. I am cutting two of each of these cardstock frames. One would be plenty if you wanted to. I really wanted the um, color to show a little more definition, so I instead stacked um, the colors together. So like two of the blue violet, two of the lilac, two of the mint, etc. And then I stacked those all one on top of another to create a really nice dimensional frame that when you look at it from the side will give you that nice uh, kind of definition or change up of color, a little rainbow of color. I used the smaller of those two dies to die cut my panel once it was all the way dry and that's going to go on the inside. So I'll go ahead and set everything else aside for now and I can start putting together my frame. I have a white card base here that I'm going to use for my card. To put together these frames I'm going to use the zig glue pin and glue these together one right on top of another. So I'll start with the blue violet just put some adhesive there and stack the other blue violet frame right on top. Kind of move those out of the way just for a second. Grab my next color, which is going to be this lilac. Again, place the glue right around all four sides and then stack my blue violet one on top of that. And I'm going to continue this for all four of the colors to give me that nice dimensional frame I was talking about. Once I have the last frame stacked on top of that, I can go ahead and glue all of them, the whole stack, right to my card base, and then I'll add some adhesive to the center of my card base. And then before I adhere my panel, I'm going to stamp up this greeting that says thank you, stamp that below the butterfly, and then adhere that right inside my dimensional frame. And there is my nice framed up stained glass butterfly. You can see kind of the, def the different colors there in that dimensional frame. I'm going to go ahead and just put something heavy on top of that for a second. I'm going to take the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush marker now and color in all of those stained glass panels on the butterfly. In between each color change, I am going to wipe off that Wink of Stella brush on a scrap piece of paper because the brush does pick up a little of the color and you don't want to cross contaminate any of the other colors that would ruin the whole look. Finally, I'm going to take some pretty pink posh sequins, some of the new iridescent ones and then the sparkling clear and adhere those with mini bling glue dots, kind of a scattering of those throughout the card and that will finish the design. Thanks for watching this video showcasing a stained glass butterfly look using Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. For more information, please visit the Lawn Fawn blog. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Music